guys in this video I'll show you guys how to deploy an app on an actual device and before we start you're obviously going to need an actual iOS device but you also need to be part of this iOS developer program from Apple which is $99 a year and when you're enrolled and you go into your member center you're gonna get access to the provisioning portal and here you need to do Basically, you need to set up a whole bunch of stuff for the app that you want to deploy to your device because there's a, a whole bunch of controls in place. And I'll explain what those controls are as I show you how to deploy a demo app on an actual device. So I'm going to start by launching Xcode and creating a new Xcode project. And it's just going to be a basic single view application. I'm going to call this the deployment demo. Okay, so this is where I want you to pay a little bit of attention to the product name, organization name, and company identifier. So you can see here it says bundle identifier. This is a combination of your company identifier and your product demo, which you can change. So if I change deployment uh, demo to, let's say, deploy demo, you can see the bundle identifier change. Okay, so this is really important as we're going to see in a second. So I'm just going to save this on the desktop. Okay, so here again, the project properties shows you what the bundle identifier is. So normally what we would do in Xcode is we have a whole bunch of simulators that we can run this demo from. And up here you see iOS device. Now this is the option you want to select to run your app on an actual device. But if you plug in your device right now, and you, you try to select this option and you try to run your app on the device, you'll get an error message saying something like, this device isn't provisioned to run this app. Now this is what you have to do. So you have to come into your provisioning portal and I'm gonna assume that this is the first time you've done this so you don't have any certificates. Now what is the certificate? Well, it's part of the signing identity which Apple can use to identify who that build belongs to because now that we're deploying builds onto real devices there could be the case where uh, someone has a malicious intent to create um, you know a malicious app and put it on someone's device so every time a, a build gets created and put on with the intention of deploying it on a device it needs to be signed it's almost like a signature so we need to upload our certificates that identify us into this portal and you can do that from Xcode. So if you go to Xcode preferences and then here under the accounts tab you can add your Apple iTunes account the one the same one that you enrolled in the iOS developer program with and you'll see your name here under the iOS program and you'll see agent uh, I'm gonna go select this and go view details and it's gonna take a little bit of time to refresh and here you can see that uh, I've got two certificates, uh, two signing identities. Now uh, I'll go through what distribution and development are in a second, but you probably won't have anything in here. So you click this plus icon and you want to request one of each. And after you do that, if you go back to the portal and you just hit refresh, you should see um, these ones here. Now keep in mind that you don't need to do any of this if your intention is just to run your app on the simulator. Now that you've requested your certificates and you have your signing identity set up, um, we have to create an app ID to represent our app. Uh, I have a bunch here, but you want to click plus and you can name your app anything. I'll call it the deploy demo. And down here in the you see this bundle ID. Now that should ring a bell because I pointed it out before, but essentially you want to go to your Xcode project and you want to grab that bundle identifier. I'm having a little bit of difficulty, but you want to make sure that this bundle ID matches exactly this bundle ID here for your project. And the reason this is is so that we can enable certain functionalities or certain services for this particular app ID. So Apple can use this app ID to ensure that no one has 
added services. No one, no one has tampered with your app and added things that you didn't intend. So it's, it's all revolving around security and protection. So I'm going to click continue and we'll click submit. And just like that, uh, the registration is done for our app ID. Okay, and the next part is devices. So here, you have to explicitly add a group of devices which you intend to install the app on. Now, this I think this surprises a lot of people because you assume that when you build your app, you're just going to be able to deploy it on every single device. But that's not the case because um, when you're testing your build and you are testing on device, you don't want that build to get into the wrong hands. So this is a mechanism where you can specify exactly which devices the app will be allowed to be installed on. Each device has a unique identifier. So you, for every device that you want to install your app on, you're going to need to add um, you're going to need to add it here. So there's a plus, uh, there's an add button here and you can just specify the name and the UDID. And I'll show you in a second how you get the UDID when I plug in my own device. Okay, so you've got a bunch of devices now under, under here. And the last step is to create a provisioning profile for our app. Now the provisioning profile is going to tie everything together. And I'll show you right here. So we'll go to this add button. Um, just to specify, there's a couple of types of provisioning profiles. So there's the development one, which we are going to create. And the purpose of this is for testing, as you can see, during development. Now there's a, two other ones. There's distribution and ad hoc. And both of these are considered distribution certificates. Now here's the difference. So during development, if you're testing with your development team, um, this is the profile that you're going to use. When you, it comes time to, let's say, send the client a build or send some beta testers a build, you're going to create a distribution ad hoc one. And for both of these certificates, sorry, for both of these profiles, uh, you still have to specify a limited number of devices that the app can be installed on, as we'll see in a second. And then finally, after all of your beta testing and client approval and whatnot, you're going to create a distribution app store one. And the sole purpose of this one is for submitting to the app store. So basically, what we're going to do is create a development profile. You're going to select the app ID that we just created. So that was uh, deploy demo here. I'm going to click continue. Uh, you're going to select the signing identity you want to use. And for development ones, let's say if you're working in a team and this, this Apple iTunes account or provisioning portal account was your company's, then you might actually have multiple certificates for all of your team members under this certificate section. And then it would show up here and you can select all of them. And this just means that, so essentially what you're doing is you're selecting the signing identity, which is going to be allowed to uh, make a build for that app ID. So right now, only I will be able to create a build for that app ID, basically for this project, only I will be able to create a build and it will only be allowed to be installed on these devices. And I can give my profile a name. I'll click generate. So this profile that we're about to download contains all of the information needed to deploy the app on the device. It contains the list of devices that the app is allowed to be deployed on. It contains the signing identities that are allowed to create a build and sign it. It contains the app ID, which if you remember when we created it, is tied to very specific 
set of services, app services, such as you know, game center, in-app purchases, push notifications. So if we didn't enable, say, push notifications, and a hacker were to uh, maliciously take our build and somehow add some code for push notifications, then Apple would be able to identify, hey, this app ID shouldn't be using this service, so this is very suspicious, that sort of stuff. So this profile uh, contains all of this information to identify uh, the app and allow us to install it on devices. So you can either download this and double click it, or another way is to go into your Xcode um, app, go to preferences, we're gonna go to view details for my account again, and you can just hit refresh here, and it's going to pull down all of, and refresh all of your existing provisioning profiles. Let me organize it by name actually. There it is, deploy demo dev profile, all right. Okay, so in our project, in the properties, we want to go into the build settings, and in here you can search for code signing. So as you can see here, it says don't code sign. Uh, so what I mentioned about signing identities earlier is related to this. So when we install apps on the simulator, we don't really need to code sign because we're just testing in the simulator. It's not going to harm anyone. But when we start deploying our app on a device, then we need to sign the build or else it won't be able to be deployed on the device. So we need to specify our signing identities. So remember, we set up this stuff right here. Well, that's what we're going to select here. We're going to select the developer signing identity for both the debug and release builds. Okay, and then now it's time to plug in our device. Okay, so I just plugged in my iPad and right here you can see that iOS device has changed to Chris's iPad 4 and this is essential to deploying the app on the device. This is almost like a signal that um, that your app can be deployed on this device. If it still says iOS device then that means something is not right. Now a couple of things that you can check is usually when you plug in your device iTunes has launched and uh, sometimes iTunes has a, a prompt that tells you to back up your device or to upgrade your device or something like that and sometimes those prompts can uh, prevent Xcode from accessing your device so you want to get rid of all those prompts uh, for iTunes so that's the first thing you can check the next thing is that you can go to window organizer and this is this is an Xcode menu and there's a devices tab you can select your device you should see a green light if you don't see a green light and it's yellow or or red then you've got something to look at or something to fix I mean there if it's the first time you've ever plugged in your device there might be a button here saying use for development so that could be the issue you you have to tap that button and it's going to uh, get your device ready for uh, deploying apps on it for development here you can see a list of provisioning profiles on this device you can hit this button right here and as a last resort, what else you can try doing is actually downloading the provisioning profile. So if we go back to this portal and we go to development profiles, if you select this guy, you can download it onto your hard drive. And then in Xcode, you can actually click the add button here and browse for it and add the profile directly onto the device. And at that point, if this device is uh, ID is allowed to be installed if the provisioning profile states that this ID this device's ID is valid to install this build the iOS device should change the name the name okay so I still haven't told you uh, how to get the device ID for your device so I promised I would do that if you go to window and organizer you can see this is the ID for your device so that's what you need to copy um, to add it in here in your provisioning portal and at this point 
you know, after all of this stuff is set up, you're finally ready to uh, deploy your app on the devices that you've selected in your provisioning profile. So if I hit run now, you know, hopefully I won't get any errors. And the app is deployed on my iPad. I can see it on my iPad. It's just a white screen because we haven't added anything to the app, but it's running and yeah, that's it. It might be a little bit tedious to set up the first time, but after you've got your certificate set up, then the next time for another app, you just have to create the app ID and the provisioning profile. Okay, I hope that wasn't too hard to follow along, and I hope that answers your question about how to deploy apps on devices. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.